She grew that business from that little byline and that instinct to help others market themselves into a masterful skill. She is one of our most requested bootcamp speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Elise Benin to our stage. I want to say three things before I start. Number one, I was totally inspired last night by Ann Handley. Who was inspired by Ann Handley? Right? So what that means is I spent, I thought I was going to go back and add a few slides to my presentation and it wouldn't be all that different, but I actually spent three hours totally revamping it. <laughs> so what you have in your binder is not what I'm presenting. Although I did upload it at this link, which I will show again at the end if you want to grab it. This is the fresh PowerPoint at gettalk.at slash bootcamp2019. I do always like to kind of at the last minute change things up based on what I hear and what I learn and the connections that we make between one session and the next because you're going to notice that we're all kind of saying the same thing over and over. And repetition is what marketing is all about, right? The more you repeat something, the more familiar people get, the more they trust you, the more they know that you can help them. So that's one of the things, trust, that Anne was talking about too. The second thing, and perhaps from Denise's presentation, her introduction, you will know now that I am not a copywriter. I write, but I'm not a copywriter. I teach creative professionals how to promote their services. And I am totally unemployable. <laughs> totally unemployable. Which means that I've been self-employed for now 31 years, last year, thank you. When I was here last year, it was my 30-year anniversary, and so we celebrated that. And I think, why not celebrate 31 years of being unemployable? And the story, the, the blurb in the New York Magazine happened the first year after I was fired from my full-time job, my second job out of college. And you know how when you're young, you really don't want to do something anymore, but you don't know how to say no or get out of it, so you just do bad things until they tell you to leave? <laughs> That's what I did, right? I got myself fired. So what I've learned, I'm going to share what I've learned in the 31 years that I've been self-employed. And there are a lot of secrets, right? Everybody's sharing their secrets. Richard shared his seven secrets. You could say that this is a secret. This actually is the most important secret I want you to take. And that is, I'm going to contradict everything everyone else says and everything I say, by the way, because I'm get, we're going to tell you what to do, but you should know that it doesn't matter what you do to promote yourself. It really doesn't matter as long as you do something. That's all that matters. And most important, that you learn from absolutely every single thing you do every single experience, every single mistake. You will, I promise, make mistakes. And you will learn from them, and then you will know what you should do. It is not, there is no formula. There is no, this is how people succeed. You each have to find your own way. And what I do is I help people find their own way. I try to guide people to find their own way. But here's what I've learned. Marketing works when you know who you're looking for, when you know where to find them, when you know what they need to hear in order to trust you. Again, remember, trust is key. You must help them learn to trust you. And then you make that the core message of your marketing, your marketing content and your content marketing. And then, and only then, do you choose the best tools to reach those people. Most people do marketing backwards. They start with the marketing tools. I should be doing social media. I should be on Instagram now. Everyone's on Instagram. Not necessarily. You only choose the tools when you know who you're trying to reach and what the message is, and then you use the tools to reach them. Now, this session is called the top three marketing tools. And when I sent the PowerPoint two months ago, I had three almost totally different tools I was going to tell you about. Right, so that just proves my point, that it almost doesn't matter what you do. You must do something. And these three that I'm going to tell you about were inspired in part by Anne Handley, because I really do think that the email newsletter thing is really important. But first, 
you, in order to figure out what tools you're going to use, and I'm going to suggest email newsletters, you need to know who you're looking for. And the people you're looking for are the people who value the services that you provide. And Richard talked about, should you have a specialty? Should you be a specialist? I agree, yes. And you should be a generalist until you find your specialty. And the point I would make is the, the work you pursue is your focus, is your specialty, but not necessarily the work you take and the work you do, right? You can do anything you want, but the work you go after, the time you spend focusing on your marketing, that should be focused on your specialty. And guess what? You can have more than one specialty. Did anyone ever tell you that? When they say, pick a niche, you can actually have more than one niche. It's plural. You're looking for the people who are ready and willing to pay. You know how so many people get really excited? And you think, oh, they want me. Oh, they're ready. Excitement doesn't mean people are ready. It takes time. They may say they're ready. They may say, OK, we've got a project on the table. And it may take a year for the project to come to you, even with all of your persistence. And you must be persistent. You're also looking for the ones who are looking for you. There are people out there. There are people in job fair looking for you. But they won't find you unless you raise your hand and tell them who you are and what you have to offer and why you are the best person for them. Because once you have identified who those people are, then all of your marketing is going to be positioning yourself for them so that they say, this is exactly who we need. That's the goal. They land on your LinkedIn profile. They land on your website. They meet you in person. And they hear what you do. And they say, you are exactly who we need. That's the goal. All right, is that clear? All right, good. You don't need to convince anyone. You don't need to persuade anyone. You don't need to cajole anyone. You almost don't even need to sell. Because if you have positioned yourself properly, they will find you. And they will say, you are exactly who we need. Instead of doing all of those things, I want you to build relationships. Richard also talked about relationships. Other people will talk about relationships. Relationships are not digital. They're real. That's why we come to an event in person, so that we can be in real time with real people. It is so important. So be glad that you're here. And for the virtual people, perhaps you can come next time, because it is really important to be here in real time. I want you to build relationships. And how do you do that? You cultivate relationships. You cultivate them with curiosity and generosity. Did you know that curiosity and generosity are marketing tools? They are marketing tools, and I will show you how to use them. Then, as I said, you're going to learn constantly through your conversations, and you're going to integrate what you learn into your marketing. And then you're going to be really generous, and you're going to share everything you learn in your marketing, in your email newsletter. And this is my favorite idea. You let your people marinate in your content until they are ready to hire you. This takes time. You know how long it takes to, to marinate something, right? So that it's just right, so that it has just the right spices? You want people to marinate in you and in your content until and only until they are ready to hire you. Because timing is everything. You can be reaching the right people with the right message, but if the timing is wrong, you will get nothing. And you may think you're, you've done something wrong or your message is wrong, or the people are wrong, and you won't know. And that's how you're going to learn. But timing, know that timing is everything. And the one thing I'm going to repeat over and over that I don't want you to forget is that every single thing you write is an example of your writing. Don't worry if you don't have samples. It doesn't matter. Because if you can write an awesome email message introducing yourself to someone, that may be all they need. They don't need to see anything else. If you can write a very compelling web page, LinkedIn profile, they can say, this is exactly who we need. That's all they need to see, all right? So don't worry about samples. So 
Everything you write is an example of your writing, including your email newsletter, okay? This is totally news section of my presentation, so it may not be perfect, but I am quoting Anne Hanley here. She says, I love this. Email newsletters are not about the news. It's about the letter. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I have been thinking about email newsletters. I sent my first email newsletter out in 1989. I've been doing email newsletters. Well, not email. Actually, that was a newsletter, a real newsletter. But I never took that word apart. It's so true. I love that. Thank you, Anne. So because it's a letter, you want to generously share yourself and your story with everyone you meet, everyone you know should be on your email list. I know there are all these laws about spam. So don't tell anyone outside of this room. Also, right, we're going to keep it a secret. I just think include everyone in your email. Yes, you want to tell them what you're going to send them. Yes, you want their permission. But I like to err on the side of generosity, right? And I'm giving it to people. I have something to offer. You have something to offer, right? And you're going to give it to them in your email newsletter. You're going to stay in touch with your email newsletter, right? Maybe we should even. I know Bob Bly sometimes call it, calls it an e-letter. Maybe that makes more sense. So I'm showing you some examples. This is one of my clients. He's a designer. So this is his, the top, actually, of his email newsletter. It's called Marketing with Mark. That's kind of cute, right? He's a funny guy. It's called, he says, the very occasional digest for marketing pros in, notice, three niches, corporate communications, technology firms, and ministries. Totally unrelated niches, plural. That's fine. And then he has a little very personal from his voice. This is exactly how he speaks. Hello, I'm Mark. I focus on helping you get your marketing and creative projects done to stay in touch. I occasionally provide curated content to inform and inspire you. It's all about them. It's not about him. And he is curating content, I'm pointing out, which means he's not a writer. He's a designer. So he doesn't know how to write. So everything he does, he's passing along other people's information. This is what the newsletter actually looks like. So it's just a big image and a little blurb, right? And that's things from other people. He's just aggregating and passing content along. That could be enough in an email newsletter. This is one of my favorite copywriters. His name is Conrad Winter. You can find him at conradwinter.com. I'm not going to show it to you, but his home page, the first line says, you found me. <laughs> I love that. It's all about them. It's not about him. You found me. You were looking for me. Here I am. This is his email newsletter, right? So it's a very simple looking uh, message. And his first line, I have to tell you a little story about this one, actually. But his first line, I'll read it. It says, no, dear Elise, no one wants to do business with a computer or have a relationship with a robot. It's creepy. <laughs> Isn't that an amazing first line? Don't you want to read more? That's why it's important to keep your web copy, content, case studies, and email communications personal. It's about them and the problems out there, and then, and only then, about him and, the, and how he helps them solve those problems with personal copywriting. Uh, this is what that whole thing looks like, right? It just keeps going on. It's, not, it's actually not all that long. But at the end, I want to show you what he writes, and I want to read this to you about your project. He says, you've got something in mind. Again, it's about you, right? You've got something in mind. Go on, admit it. You're wondering whether I'd be a good fit. By all means, check out my site. See how I work. Take a look at what I've been up to. And if you have any questions, let's talk. Just call me at, and he puts his phone number and his email. He gives options for how people can communicate with him. Then he says, curious about me? Something you should know about me is that I love business to business copywriting. Anyone can say that. You should know that I love this type of copywriting. That in and of itself could make them say, this is exactly who we need. I love it because it gives me a chance to immerse myself in segments and businesses I find fascinating, like, and then these are links, transportation and logistics, that's one of his niches, training and technology. Oh, look, he's got three niches too. How about that? 
Another thing you should know about me is that because of my background, I bring an agency style of writing to websites, email campaigns, videos, ads, brochures, case studies, and, well, everything. I emphasize creativity and key market insights to create copy for you that positions your brand apart from the competition. It's all about them and what he's going to do for them. It's almost nothing about him and only about him in the context of what he's going to do for them. That's the way you need to frame your own marketing and self-promotion. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read that last line again. Create copy for you that positions your brand apart from your competition, way apart. That's it. That's me. That's what I do. Can't you just feel him? Can't you just hear him? It's almost like he's here with us. That's what you're trying to create with your own self-promotion. Bring yourself, Anne talked about this a lot last night, right? Bring yourself and your story through your marketing. That's what will help you stand apart. You don't need to rack your brain about how am I going to be different. Just be yourself and find your way. <laughs>